Hello everyone, welcome to today's uh, class. I hope you uh, went through the content of the last class. We will briefly look at uh, what we did in the last class. Uh, we started with the allyl indium chemistry and as you can see here that when indium uh, metal is reacted with uh, any halide, particularly allyl halide, then we get uh, as a, an intermediate of uh, this type. Um, where of this kind here and which has a structure of this type and that reacts with um, uh, the aldehyde or a ketone uh, especially in a DMF or THF as a solvent because in other solvents the reaction is somewhat sluggish. And uh, in these cases, we get a, a mixture of uh, syn and anti products. However, if um, we have a chelation control, uh, particularly of this type, when you have a hydroxy group uh, which is present alpha to the carbonyl group, then there is a chelation control. And we saw in the last class that we can get specifically uh, syn product through chelation control. Then uh, we also looked at uh, uh, how um, uh, alpha pinene can be converted to the beta pinene although the yield is uh, only 24 uh, percent overall yield but still it is a, a very important reaction since uh, alpha pinene which is thermodynamically more stable olefin which is a tri substituted olefin gets converted to beta uh, pinene uh, which is uh, uh, having an exomethylene group here uh, which is thermodynamically less st stable. So therefore, it is a very important reaction and therefore, it is uh, a very good application of the indium based uh, uh, isomerization. And then uh, we also looked at the uh, formation of uh, such kind of uh, vinyl epoxide or uh, allyl epoxides using alpha haloesters. Uh, of uh, different kinds and allyl chlorides uh, and thus we were able to make uh, these kinds of functionalized epoxides. Now uh, we will uh, proceed uh, further today to see uh, other reactions especially of uh, the allyl 10 compounds. So allyl 10 compounds are allyl stannins which are um, like um, of this type. Uh, when you have say uh, allyl tin having different substituents. Uh, now there is a more covalency between carbon and tin bond and therefore they are generally less reactive than the corresponding lithium or um, magnesium allylated compounds. Thus uh, they can be stored uh, easily and therefore they are uh, more easy to handle. The reduced reactivity because of the covalency of the carbon tin bond, the reduced reactivity uh, increases the ease of handling as you can uh, imagine that the, it is much easier to handle such um, compounds if they are relatively more stable and less reactive. And um, uh, we need however uh, Lewis acid activation or we need high temperature. Uh, that is the uh, only difference that we have it in comparison to allyl lithium or allyl magnesium uh, compounds. So for example, um, unlike allyl silanes, allyl st stannins react directly with aldehydes on heating. That is um, for example, if you have which we will be taking up a little later is you have an allyl silane for example here of this type, they um, require a Lewis acid. So in comparison to that allyl tin compounds of this type uh, do not um, require uh, necessarily uh, Lewis acid but they can also be at high temperature uh, allowed to react with aldehydes to form this type of intermediate. So if we take uh, an allyl tin compound uh, which then reacts with an aldehyde at 200 degrees then we see that we get 
this uh, there is a transfer of the uh, tin uh, uh, to the oxygen and therefore we get this allyl uh, tin ether type of molecule or the homo allyl tin ether type of molecule which can upon hydrolysis leads to the corresponding homo allyl alcohol. So, um, this is done at high temperature. Now, uh, if we take uh, halo allyl stannins where a Lewis acid is built into the reagent are generally more reactive. So, if we have um, uh, the uh, reagents of uh, this type here like this which uh, can be prepared from the corresponding allyl uh, halides such as allyl bromide. So, if we take an allyl bromide it can be expected that uh, that reacts with say uh, tin uh, and it forms uh, a, an intermediate of this type where there is an oxidative addition. And this is the one that acts um, as a kind of uh, uh, inbuilt Lewis acid as well as the allyl transfer reagent. So, there is an allyl transfer reagent from here and, and of course, you have a kind of uh, Lewis acidity associated with this particular part of the uh, reagent. So, um, uh, these, mo these molecules of this type uh, or if we can uh, also prepare something of this type we have here R uh, S N um, X 2 uh, I which can uh, be prepared from say for example, it can come from R I and S N X 2. So, if we take a tin halide and react with uh, a corresponding allyl iodide or so, so we can get a reagent of this type where there will be a transfer of the R group and in the presence of this part which acts like a Lewis acid. Now, these uh, reagents uh, of this type which is uh, R S N X or R S N X 2 I type of reagents uh, are um, kind of uh, relatively uh, stable in water and uh, they can be um, reacted in the aqueous medium also. Therefore, you, we can use water as well as THF as a co-solvent. And uh, ultrasound is, uh, is expected to also uh, help and therefore, the uh, yield can be increased if we use uh, ultrasound as a medium uh, for the reaction. Uh, likewise, uh, for example, uh, the second example is like SNCl2 and allyl iodide. This is what is of this type of uh, reagent and that also reacts with the, if the complicated molecule of this type where there is an aldehyde with, a, with the several carbon-carbon uh, bonds or carbon-oxygen bonds with a specific stereochemistry being there. So, this particular reaction can also be done either in the presence of tin chloride and allyl iodide or you can take allyl iodide and tin and uh, you can also do the reaction in aqueous medium. And this is the product with a high degree of um, selectivity that is obtained with respect to this and with respect to this. So, uh, we, we get the 1,3 um, uh, asymmetric induction. So, it is a kind of 1,3 asymmetric induction because we are now going to uh, react aldehyde uh, which is now uh, reacting with the allyl iodide in the presence of uh, either tin chloride or tin and therefore, there is an asymmetric induction uh, which is of 1,3 type. So, this is how it can be seen. So, if we uh, try and write the, um, the intermediate or the transition state of this kind here where there is an acetal moiety present here. Uh, here of this kind acetal moiety and when the aldehyde which is present here uh, reacts with the, um, uh, the Lewis acid part of the allyl reagent then of course, there is a chelation from this oxygen here as well as through the aldehyde oxygen here and this is the time of transition state that is formed where allyl group is transferred and of course, you would eventually get here OM which is uh, the O metal and then of course, upon hydrolysis that releases the corresponding homo allyl alcohol. So, this OH group is released from the OM that is the O tin 
um, particular moiety. So, if we take this specific um, compound which we converted into this where we said that this stereochemistry here, this stereochemistry here with respect to this stereochemistry is, uh, uh, is formed upon allylation. So, we can write this particular part here say if we can take this part here as written as R then this is what is the R group here and then of course we have oxygen, carbon, oxygen this is the acetal part these are the two methyl groups here this is a methyl group this is a methyl group that is what we have written here these two methyl groups and of course this is the second oxygen and then you have this methyl group here here this is the methyl here and then you have an aldehyde. When such a chelation occurs as it is shown here if such a chelation occurs then of course um, what we have is uh, if we have this then of course uh, the allyl group gets transferred from the lower side and, and this is what the lower side is the uh, allyl group coming and therefore the oxygen goes into the uh, mode of uh, uh, beta hydroxy. So, this is what the beta hydroxy which is uh, upon the reaction of the allyl group or upon transferring of the allyl group from the lower side the OH group becomes uh, on the top side which is the beta side and this is also already a beta side and this is of course coming as an alpha side. So, this is alpha uh, oxygen that is this particular carbon oxygen bond is alpha oriented. So, this is the stereochemistry that is what is expected and the transition state is this the transition state which leads to the formation of this particular product. So, uh, the uh, essentially what is happening is that the um, carbon tin bond uh, which is carbon M bond as we have uh, shown here acts as a Lewis acid. So, likewise we can react crotyl tin compounds with uh, aldehydes and then allow CC bond formation to take place. For example, if we take a crotyl tin compound like this which could be either cis or trans uh, double bond that means Z or E double bond and if we react with an aldehyde under heating conditions then we can get either a syn product from Z olefin or a trans product or anti product from trans uh, olefin. So, likewise we can react crotyl tin compounds with uh, carbonyl compounds to form CC bonds. For example, if we start with a crotyl tin molecule like this in which the double bond is either Z or E oriented, then upon reaction with aldehyde under heating conditions we can get either syn product or anti product. That means from Z olefin we get the syn product and from the E olefin we get the anti product. How does it happen? Like for example, if we start with this Z oriented crotyl tin compound and react with aldehyde then we can expect to have a transition state of this kind in which now carbon carbon bond will form where R group is equatorially oriented and cis, since this double bond is cis oriented therefore, we are writing the methyl group in this particular position. When this CC bond forms as you can see that the OH group is pointing below and also the methyl group is pointing below and therefore, this is a syn oriented or syn configured compound which we can write it as Newman projection like this which is also called as erythro compound. In a similar fashion we start with this uh, E configured crotyl tin compound and react with aldehyde then now we have this kind of transition state where the R group is still equatorially oriented, but now the methyl is also oriented equatorially in the transition state because it is now a trans double bond here. So, this transition state then leads to the formation of uh, 
this particular compound here which is uh, anti configured because now methyl group is pointing upwards and then alcohol is pointing downwards. This can be written up as a Newman projection like this which is called a 3O compound. So, this is how the crotyl tin compounds add to carbonyls and lead to cis bond formation specifically from Z crotyl tin compounds to syn products and from E crotyl tin compounds to anti products. Now, there are three types of crotyl uh, organometallics that are useful. Type 1 crotyl um, uh, organometallics are basically uh, reacting with aldehydes uh, mostly via a chair uh, like transition states of course as we saw and the stereochemical information present in the reagent is transmitted to an anti as we saw just now uh, that the anti product is formed from E alkene precursor. If suppose you have allyl or crotyl tin molecule which has a E alkene then of course we get uh, the anti product and uh, of course from Z we get a syn product. So, this is the first type of uh, crotyl organometallics uh, uh, type of uh, uh, reagents and uh, the selectivity uh, or the stereoselectivity is observed for this kind of crotyl uh, organometallics. Um, which uh, have a boron, aluminum uh, and a tin type of uh, uh, molecules particularly via uh, thermal reactions. So, the boron and aluminum uh, actually uh, lead to kind of uh, chelation uh, in, in an intramolecular fashion and that leads to the formation of the product and the products are this, this based on which kind of uh, allyl crotyl tin molecule that one is taking. Now, second type of crotyl organometallic reagents uh, require uh, Lewis acid and um, uh, in this particular case what happens there is a stereo convergent uh, uh, reactions are observed. It means that uh, the, the irrespective of the uh, uh, geometry of the uh, starting allyl tin product whether it is this or it is this. Um, uh, we generally get the syn product see this is the syn product. So, uh, it both geometric isomers of the reagent preferentially lead to the same product and this type of uh, uh, molecules uh, are basically uh, from the reagents that contain tin, silicon and titanium because each one of them does require uh, the form uh, rec the presence of a Lewis acid for example, BF3 3 or tin chloride or uh, say titanium tetrachloride or anything of that kind that is required. So, the, the third type of uh, um, of course, these reactions uh, are supposed to proceed through uh, open chain um, uh, and acyclic transition states in which the carbonyl oxygen is coordinating with the Lewis acid. So, the carbonyl uh, uh, oxygen uh, coordinates with the Lewis acid and then the reagent uh, approaches the carbonyl oxygen in anti parallel fashion. This is what was basically expected because it is obvious that once the chelation occurs the, uh, uh, the approach of the nucleophile or the allyl part will happen from the anti periplanar fashion. But uh, Denmark uh, suggested uh, based on uh, various kinds of stereochemical um, analysis that um, uh, the synclinal orientation is preferred. So, like for example, here as it is shown here. So, basically what is happening is that the uh, when the aldehyde is uh, oriented in this way that we have shown as a Newman projection type of orientation, the carbon oxygen going uh, oxygen bond is going backside because R and H are here this is carbon R bond this is carbon H bond of the aldehyde and the carbon oxygen double bond is going backside to which the Lewis acid has uh, actually interacted. And therefore, uh, instead of uh, the anti periplanar fashion this is how the synclinal fashion the allyl tin product 
uh, proceeds or reagent proceeds and uh, therefore it is in a non-parallel uh, fashion uh, the, uh, uh, the reagent approaches. So what we can say that stereoconvergence easily rationalized if it is assumed that the two react reactants approach in a non-parallel manner so that they minimize interactions. For example, this is going away from the backside and it is approaching the aldehyde and it is coming in a synclinal fashion. So there is no not much interaction with the R group. We can show this in a slightly different way as we can see it here that here we are basically talking about the uh, uh, mixture of the uh, stereoisomers. So we can say that this is a mixture of the stereoisomers here and therefore it is a mixture of E and Z both isomers. So if suppose the Lewis acid interacts with the aldehyde in this particular fashion and therefore now the approach of the uh, this allyl reagent occurs uh, not in an anti periplanar fashion which, which means that it is not going to be from this direction but it is going to be from this direction. This is what is the synclinal um, uh, orientation in, and uh, if we look at the three possibilities where uh, the uh, interaction of the uh, allyl uh, moiety, allyl tin moiety uh, is considered uh, with respect to the Lewis acid which is attached to the oxygen of the aldehyde, then this is supposed to be the uh, most favored transition state because there is no interaction of, of the Lewis acid with any one of the substituent either hydrogen or uh, any other part of the molecule. Uh, and therefore, if we can see now here, uh, if R group and the, uh, the particular vinyl group here or uh, is uh, oriented in a zigzag fashion then of course we can write it uh, that um, when this reaction occurs basically what we are trying to get it is, uh, is uh, something of this kind OH here and H here and of course we will have this and methyl group here and IH and R. So if we can uh, write it in this fashion that the, uh, the uh, OH group remains as it is, R group is here and H is here and now if we uh, orient it uh, the methyl group here and of course we can write it in this fashion. So both of them are same because now what we have done it is we have brought this vinyl group up anti to the R so that we can then write as a product which is in this fashion. And in such a situation as you can see the OH group and the methyl group both of them are pointing in the same direction and therefore this is a syn product. On the other hand we can also write two more transition states uh, in this particular fashion each one of them is synclinal orientation with respect to aldehyde and therefore if we uh, if we put the same reagent here like this then of course we expect that there is a going to be a steric hindrance here uh, with Lewis acid and the methyl group and in this case there is a steric hindrance with respect to either hydrogen here or the tin depending on which uh, uh, the uh, stereoisomer that we are taking because we have started with a, a mixture of the olefin the allyl tin molecule. In each case as you can see that the um, if we orient in a similar fashion as we did it here then we will see that the methyl group and the OH group are anti here as well as here anyway here this R group is uh, 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 opposite to the uh, vinyl group which will come so therefore now hydroxy group here and the methyl group are anyway anti. In a similar fashion you can also write it down this particular uh, molecule or this particular orientation uh, in such a way that if we uh, rotate the vinyl part in opposite to uh, this uh, carbon R bond then we will see that we get the same product as an anti product. Therefore considering this kind of synclinal transition states uh, we if we look at it uh, then of course we expect that we get the uh, favored product as the syn product.
And the type 3 um, crotyl ergonometallic react with aldehydes to give mainly the addition products regardless of the uh, alkene geometry. This is exactly opposite of what we just now talked and um, the reason for that is that the this type of uh, third type of crotyl uh, magmetal reagents are basically are uh, um, such reagents which uh, equilibrate to the more stable and more reactive E isomer. So this equilibration is very very important because irrespective of which uh, which geometry that you have of the allyl um, uh, metal bond here if we have something like this whether it is um, here there is a orientation of the methyl group it is a mixture and eventually it equilibrates to um, the uh, E isomer and if that happens then of course we always get the anti product this will lead to anti product. So and this is possible in cases where there is a titanium and zinc uh, zirconium based uh, uh, organometallics are used. So you have something like this here and if we have a mixture of the reagents and if we have a titanium here and uh, whatever that R3 here or zirconium you have a zirconium then they equilibrate to the uh, E isomer and of course and that leads to the anti product. So this is how it happens so if we can see here for example or even chromium based uh, reagents. Uh, so you have here a chromium uh, reagent um, which is formed from by reacting Z isomer or uh, E isomer of the crotyl bromide and if they react with, uh, with uh, chromium chloride then what they form is a reagent of this type or this type which then equilibrate and majority of it forms in this fashion which reacts with the aldehyde through this transition state and this transition state leads to the formation of the anti product. So um, this is how uh, the reaction occurs in the third type of uh, crotyl uh, reagents and uh, therefore we have a choice of uh, uh, different uh, types of uh, reactions that we can think. First one is of course syn product formation, the other one is uh, the anti one and in the in some cases you get the mixture of uh, anti and uh, syn especially when it is a um, heating compound using uh, heating condition using allyl tin uh, reagents. So we will stop it here today and then we take up the some other aspects in the next class. So take care of it and we will see you next time. Thank you.